Hello everyone and welcome to Biophile Academy. Knowledge Beyond Classroom. Hello everyone, today I am going to discuss about prostaglandins, an essential hormone of human body, so let's start with it. Prostaglandins. Let's start with its history. The name prostaglandin derives from the prostate glands, when prostaglandin was first isolated from seminal fluid in 1935 by the Swedish physiologist Ulf von Euler, and independently by M. W. Goldbart, it was believed to be a part of prostatic secretions. It was later shown that many other tissues secrete prostaglandins for various functions. The first total syntheses of prostaglandin F2-alpha and prostaglandin E2 were reported by E.J. Corey in 1969. In 1971, it was determined that aspirin-like drugs could inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins. This was about the history let's moves to its introduction. The prostaglandins are a group of physiologically active lipid compounds having hormone-like effect in animals. It have been found in almost every tissues in human and animals. Every prostaglandins contain 20 carbon atoms including a 5-carbon ring. Prostaglandins are a group of closely related arachidonic acid derivatives. Prostaglandins are the members of eicosanoids family. Prostaglandins, prostacyclin and thromboxanes are known as prostanoids. This prostanoids along with other mediators of inflammation plays an important role in inflammatory responses. There are various prostaglandins namely PGA, PGB, PGC, PGD, PGE, PGF, PGG, PGH. They are very active even in very low concentrations and have a very short half-life. Now let's move on to the biosynthesis of prostaglandins. Icosanoids are biosynthesized from arachidonic acid, an important constituent of cell membrane. Its biosynthesis depends upon the rate of release of arachidonic acid from the membrane phospholipids. Such release occurs under the influence of various stimuli which can be chemical, hormonal, neurochemical and physical. These stimuli causes the activation of one or more lipases such as the enzyme phospholipase A2, which in turn mediates the release of arachidonic acid from the membrane phospholipids. Arachidonic acids are released from the membrane phospholipids metabolized by oxidation and undergoes cyclizations by four pathways to give various eicosanoids, such as prostaglandins, leukotrienes, isoprostane. Basically there are four pathways for the synthesis of eicosanoids, they are 1. Cyclooxygenase pathway 2. Lipoxygenase pathway 3. Isoprostane pathway 4. P450 epoxygenase pathway Cyclooxygenase pathway help in the biosynthesis of prostaglandins. Whereas lipoxygenase pathway helps in the biosynthesis of leukotrienes. And the other two pathways are helpful in synthesis of various other members of eicosanoids. Now let us move to actual biosynthesis process. At first the release of arachidonic acid from membrane phospholipids occurs due to the activation of enzymes phospholipase A2 and phospholipase C. The formed arachidonic acid may give prostaglandins by going through cyclooxygenase pathway or either it can form leukotrienes by undergoing lipoxygenase pathway. Now coming to cyclooxygenase pathway. Synthesis of various prostaglandins occurs in the presence of enzymes COX-1 and COX-2 that is nothing but cyclooxygenase 1 or 2. One thing which is important here is COX-1 is present in majority of cells of endothelium, gastrointestinal tract platelets. The functioning is termed as housekeeping which involves protection of gastric epithelium, vascular endothelium, kidneys. Whereas COX-2 is not present in cells but get induced in response to inflammatory stimulus. They generate prostanoids in case of inflammation and in malignancy. So COX-1 or COX-2 produces prostaglandins G2 from arachidonic acid. This prostaglandins G2 in the presence of enzyme PGH synthase forms prostaglandin H2 which is responsible for synthesis of various prostanoids. PGH2 in the presence of enzyme PGE synthase gives prostaglandin E2. PGH2 gives prostaglandin F2-alpha in the presence of enzyme PGF synthase. PGH2 gives prostaglandin D2 in the presence of enzyme PGD synthase. PGH2 gives prostacyclin and thromboxanes in the presence of enzymes PGI synthase and TXA synthase respectively. Cyclooxygenase pathway is a very important pathway for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. As these drugs act on the COX enzyme and inhibit the synthesis of inflammatory prostanoids. Now coming to the general mechanism of prostaglandins. 
Prostaglandins exhibits their pharmacological action by binding to G-protein coupled receptors which are in turn linked to various G-proteins namely, GIGSGQ. When prostaglandin binds to the GS receptor it leads to the activation of adenyl cyclase which increases the levels of cyclic AMP in the cell. This cyclic AMP activates various protein kinases which regulates the functioning of various cellular proteins. When prostaglandins binds to GI receptor it causes the inhibition of adenyl cyclase which causes the decrease in the level of cyclic AMP. In case of GQ receptor it causes the activation of a membrane-bound enzyme which is phospholipase C, which again produces two secondary messengers, number 1. Anisotyl 1, 4, 5 triphosphate IP3. Number 2. Diacylglycerol DAG. Now let's us move to the prostaglandins receptors. There are mainly three receptors of prostaglandins namely, DP receptor, EP receptor, FP receptor. DP receptor is of GS and GQ type of receptor and the primary ligand which attached to it is PGD2. This receptor is located in CNS, eosinophils, T cells. Its pharmacological effects are dilation of blood vessels, smooth muscle relaxation, inhibition of platelets aggregation. Now coming to EP receptor there are four subtypes of EP receptor. EP1, EP2, EP3, EP4. PGE2 is the primary ligand for all EP receptors however, EP1 is of GQ type of receptor, EP2 is of GS as well as GQ type, EP3 is of GS, GQ and GI type of receptor whereas EP4 is of GS type. EP1 is located in kidneys, lungs, stomach and EP2 is least abundant whereas EP3 and EP4 is found throughout the body. Now coming to FP receptor. It is of GQ type and primary ligand is PGF2-alpha. It is located in corpus luteum, eyes, heart, kidney, lungs. Its pharmacological effect is it stimulates the contraction of smooth muscles. Now coming to adverse effects of prostaglandins. Nausea, emesis, diarrhea, fever, bronchoconstriction, hypotension, fainting, vertigo, flushing, hypercalciuria, move to last but not the least. Its therapeutic uses. It is used as a abortifacient. It means they are capable of preventing or terminating the pregnancy mainly PGE and PGF2-alpha are used as abortifacient. Labor induction and augmentation, which means it is used for inducing and maintaining labor in pregnant women. Postpartum hemorrhage. It is often defined as the loss of more than 500 milliliters or 1000 milliliters of blood within the first 24 hours following childbirth. It can be controlled by intramuscular injection of carboprost which is a PGF2-alpha analog. Cytoprotective action. Prostaglandin E analogues such as misoprostol, rioprostol are beneficial in healing peptic ulcers. To maintain the patency of ductus arteriosus. Normally, ductus arteriosus in fetus closes after birth, however, if it fails to close, then its closure is accomplished surgically. In such cases, especially in neonates suffering from congenital heart diseases, infusion of prostaglandin Z and prostacyclin analogues is given to maintain the patency of ductus arteriosus. And lastly, to inhibit platelet aggregation. PGD2 analogues are mainly used to inhibit the aggregation of platelets. I hope you find this video informative. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.